The most expensive item in our backup power system is the AGM battery. The same $300 100 amp hour battery that I bought back in 2015 costs $400 now. I tried to buy another for use in the backup power project this summer, but no discount for me. So, what if you could use a battery that you already own? Maybe even a recently discarded RV or marine battery. That would bring the cost down. Let's try it. First up is this 92 amp hour West Marine AGM battery. It costs $310 new. This one is four years old. And when I got it in the spring of 2022, it was filthy and it only measured two volts. So I put it on my $21 NZX pulse repair charger that I bought from AliExpress. And 36 hours later, it measured 13.8 volts, just like it shows here. Now, I've been using this battery to test equipment all summer. And if you've been watching the Backup Power Project, you'll recognize it from previous episodes. What you're about to see was shot immediately after these two spectacular fails. Can this cheap Harbor Freight inverter run the pump off of a four-year-old 92 amp hour battery that someone else threw away? The same battery that was used in the previous episode and has not been recharged? Much more expensive inverters couldn't do it. Not even when connected to a fully charged 100 amp hour battery. What are the odds? The load is 4600 peak inrush watts. So we not only have a used 92 amp hour battery hooked up, we also have a cheap Harbor Freight inverter that's only rated 4,000 peak inrush watts. Place your bets.
Now you're not supposed to wire dissimilar batteries in parallel. The theory being that the stronger battery will always be trying to charge the weaker battery and the life of the stronger battery will quickly be shortened. But these two batteries are so similar. They're both AGM. This is a group 34, 100 amp hour. This is a group 27, 92 amp hour. But they work so similarly and they charge up to the same uh, voltage and discharge at about the same rate that I, I thought I would give it a try. And so far it's worked quite well for me. Now here's how I did it. The system consists of four battery cables. We have this longer black one here. This looks like about a one foot one knot cable. We have a shorter one here. This is a nine inch one knot cable. And we have looks like a pair of nine inch cables on this side. So we have a total of four battery cables. And we have two battery disconnect switches. We have one here one here. Now in order for the front battery to work, no problem with the positive. The positive comes right into the inverter. The negative though has to go all the way to the back battery, has to come across through this shorter battery cable, has to go through the switch. If this switch is closed, no problem running the front battery. If this switch is open, we have no connection to the negative. Front battery cannot possibly work. What about the back battery? How does the back battery work? Well, negative on the back battery is directly connected, so there's no problem there. How do we get the positive back? Well, the positive has to come through here, has to go through the switch. The switch has to be closed. The switch is internally connected to this post and then it jumps, comes back through here. So if this switch is open, the back battery can't possibly work. So the left switch controls the back battery and the right switch controls the front battery. If both of these switches are screwed down, both batteries are working, I have 192 amp hours. If both are open, neither battery can work. And the reason I did that is that if these two batteries did not play nice with each other, then simply by closing one switch and opening the other, we could run just off of one battery. And in the event that battery ran down, we could turn it off and turn on the other battery. But at the same time, I've got the solar charger going across both. So under normal circumstances, both of these batteries are being charged as if it was one big battery. Now, how's that working out? Well, let, let's take a look at the charge controller. Well, we can see that the sun is out. That's what this indicates right here. That's the solar panel. It's charging the battery bank and we're charging we're up to 14.1 14.2 volts that's just how the alternator works on an automobile and we have this little light connected here to our cigarette lighter socket very convenient I can push this button this is the load button here turn my light on and off very useful just a cigarette lighter socket connected down here to the load terminals so yeah it's charging great they work well together I can run my pump all day off-grid on a sunny day like today anyways now how how does that work okay we know that when the pump is running that would be this pump right here we draw about 90 amps out of the battery bank so the pump runs for about four minutes so four minutes at 90 amps Four times nine, 360 amp minutes. That's how much we've drained from the battery for one four minute pump run. Well, as long as the sun is out, we're, we can try to put that back. So when under conditions like this, bright sunlight, 
two panels, each panel putting out about 5 amps, that's 10 amps being put back in constantly. So times 30 minutes, that's 300 amps. 60 minutes, that's 600 amps. We only took 360 out, so that's a surplus of 240 amp minutes, which is just going to get dumped because once these batteries are fully charged, the charge controller prevents the batteries from being overcharged, so all that excess energy just goes for naught. But in truth, we do use the pump if people are home. We do use it more than once an hour, especially if you're doing dishes, washing clothes, and so on. So I've monitored our usage. It's more like three runs every two hours. So let's redo that math. Each run takes out about 360 amp minutes. That would be 720 amp minutes. In two hours, we can put back 1,200 amp minutes. So if we have three amp runs, 720 plus another three, that's like 1080. So yeah, as long as the sun is shining, we can run this pump three times every two hours, and we're actually not losing any power from the batteries because the sun puts it all back. It, it's amazing how well this works. And I guess, like everything else, you have to try it for yourself uh, to confirm that. So I hope, hope this helps somebody. If you have two very similar batteries, even though one might be slightly larger than the other, you can try this. You'll see right away whether or not they're playing well together or not playing well together. These two seem to be playing very well together. I'm not having any issues with them. They charge right up. It doesn't get much better than that. Want to try it? Here's a list of the parts I used. Due to closet space limitations, I have both batteries, over 120 pounds, on an 18 by 12 hardwood dolly. You can't see it, but it is there right under those batteries. After attaching the cables at the front of the closet, I rolled them to the back of the closet, where you see them now, under the well pipes. In the event that you could also use a dolly, Know that this $14 Harbor Freight model holds the weight and rolls over a cement floor perfectly. Just what I needed. Here are the battery disconnect switches I used. These also came from Harbor Freight. You'll need two of them. And here's where the extra pair of 9-inch 1-aught battery cables came from. $10 each is a very good price. Plus, I've gotten good quality and very fast service from this company. Now, if you don't already have one, you're also going to need an Anzex. I really don't know how to pronounce that name, so forgive me if I've butchered it. But you're also going to need an Anzex pulse repair charger. This model can also be used as a battery maintainer until you get solar panels. You'll be amazed at the number of AGM batteries you can recover with this charger. Think that West Marine 92 amp hour battery was a fluke? Next up is a pair of 75 amp hour Lifeline AGM batteries. These cost about $350 each when new, so we're looking at about $700 in discarded batteries here. Both had fallen below 9 volts when I got them. But look what the voltmeter reads now. Since a single 75 amp hour battery is not powerful enough to run a 90 amp well pump, I've wired them in parallel using another pair of 9 inch 1 aught battery cables. In parallel, amps double, voltage stays the same. So what we're looking at is a 12 volt. 150 amp hour battery bank. Think these two batteries will run the well pump? We know this Jupiter inverter can do it. We know the one aught cables are good. What are the chances? Another pair of AGM batteries brought back from the dead by the Anzix charger? Place your bets.
Well, this battery bank is not nearly as powerful as the first one. Made from 192 amp hour AGM batteries, but if it's all someone had, it would work. So, it is possible to back up your well pump using a discarded marine or RV battery without spending a fortune. All you need to add to this list is an Anzix charger. Hope these two examples help someone. If so, please like, subscribe, leave a comment. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching.